Most substances are mixtures. Homogeneous mixtures are called solutions. A solution consists of a solute and solvent. In this video, we'll look at the chemical force between solute, between solvent, and between solute and solvent. Chemical forces help us explain the solubility of a solute and solvent and how to separate a solute from a solvent. A lot of research involving chemical force and solubility goes into designing soaps and detergents. For example, Finnish Quantum, a dishwasher detergent, contains a softening salt to remove magnesium and calcium from hard water, a rinse aid to prevent water from spotting your cups and glasses, and a glass protector. The Nestle company wants to make sure your cocoa dissolves completely in hot water. To make sure your hot cocoa is a smooth, appealing drink with adequate nutrient delivery and uptake, chemical forces are involved. Omni is a less toxic and less smelly cleaning solvent which was invented just a few years ago. Here are a few other new cleaning solvents and their applications for use. A homogeneous mixture is a solution. Stop the video and answer these two questions. And the answers are, the solute is the substance present in the smaller amount. The solvent is the substance present in the higher amount. Concentration quantifies the amount of solute in the solution. Stop the video and review these different concentration units. We use molarity in Chem 1A. Percent is often used in health applications, and we'll use molality later. Stop the video again and answer this question. And the answer is... The molarity of the solution is 1.4 molar, or 1.4 moles of NaCl in 1 liter of solution. We're given the mass of solute NaCl and the volume of solution, so the percent mass to volume is 8.3%. For molality, we have to calculate the kilograms of solvent, which is the water. Volume of solution times density of solution gives us the mass of the solution. The mass of solute plus the mass of solvent gives us the mass of solution. We just calculated the mass of solution, subtract the mass of salt to solute, that will give us the mass of solvent. So the molality of the solution is 1.5 molal, which means 1.5 moles of NaCl in 1 kilogram of water, the solvent. Try this one. Stop the video and calculate the concentrations of this sugar solution. And the answers are, here's the information we need for each calculation. Our cells contain 0.9% NaCl and 5% glucose. Stop the video and answer this question. And the answer is because in Chem 1A we use the like dissolve like rule to predict whether one substance is soluble in another. Stop the video and answer these questions. And the answers are although ionic compounds are polar, not all ionic compounds are soluble in water according to the solubility rules table. For example, silver chloride and calcium carbonate are not soluble in water. Why not? Here's what we want to look at and compare the chemical force between solute and solute, solvent and solvent, and solute and solvent. Lattice energy is the energy required to break the ionic bonds between the ions in the ionic compound. Hydration energy is the energy released when an ion is hydrated by water. This is the chemical force between the solute and the solvent. In water, oxygen is more electronegative than hydrogen. This results in hydrogen having a slight positive charge and oxygen having a slight negative charge. So the hydrogen water is attracted to the negative ion, in this picture the chloride ion, and the oxygen is attracted to the positive ion, in this picture the sodium ion. So NaCl is soluble in water because hydration energy is greater than the lattice energy. The chemical force between the ion and solvent overcomes the force between the ions. What about silver chloride? Stop the video and answer this question. And the answer is, the chemical force between silver and chloride ions cannot be overcome by the chemical force between silver ion in water and chloride ion in water. Ethanol is soluble in water. Let's look at intermolecular force to explain why. Structure and shape tell us water is polar this means the intermolecular force between water molecules are London forces, dipole-dipole forces, and hydrogen bonds. Structure and shape tell us ethanol is also a polar molecule. The intermolecular force between ethanol are also London forces, dipole-dipole forces, and hydrogen bonds. Ethanol is soluble in water because ethanol can break the hydrogen bonds between water molecules and form hydrogen bonds to water molecules. Let's take a look at a sugar solution. 
Stop the video and explain why sugar is soluble in water. And the answer is, sugar forms hydrogen bonds to other sugar molecules. Sugar can break the hydrogen bonds between water molecules and form hydrogen bonds to water molecules. Oil is not soluble in water. Stop the video and explain why. And the answer is, the big oil molecule is nonpolar, which means London forces exist between oil molecules. Those London forces are not strong enough to break the hydrogen bonds between water molecules. So oil is not soluble in water. To summarize, a solute is soluble in a solvent if the chemical forces between solute and solvent are stronger than the chemical force between solute and solute. For a molecular solution, the chemical force between solute and solute are intermolecular forces. For an ionic solution, the chemical force between solute and solute are ionic bonds.